Well, the deadly rampage is the worst terror attack on U.S. soil since 9-11. All right. Dana Perino joins us now. Dana, things seem like they're getting dangerous here in the United States, and the president seems almost willfully ignorant of what the threat is. He really looks like Baghdad Bob up there, like denying an you obvious reality. You mean you weren't reality. reassured and filled with confidence after you saw the president? I've never been a fan. I'm not a voter, but I actually felt worried listening to right. him because he seems so out of touch. What's going on? I, I'm not exactly sure. You know, Heather asked me right before we came on, um, you know, what would I have advised? And it's kind of difficult for me because I worked for such a different president. And, you know, the way that President Bush saw the world was very clear eyed. Like, there is good versus evil. You are with us, you're against us. We are going to fight them there so that we don't have to fight them here. But always hedged, right? And said, our intelligence communities have to be right 100% of the time. We know that they're determined to strike us here. We cannot rest at all because we know it could happen here now it is happening here um and in, in fact i saw today that you know the chattanooga shooting that happened the fbi still hasn't declared that as uh, terrorism but right. the fbi declared this as terrorism within 36 hours i mean all of us kind of when you're watching the news coverage you're like right. okay we know what this is the president as i understand it, the white house and the fbi are in a little bit of um, disagreement like the, the, the following day after the fbi did it yesterday he comes out this morning and he still doesn't specifically call it terrorism he says possible ties to terrorist groups possible right I'm gonna go with the FBI on this one yeah right well they weren't afraid to call yeah James Comey wasn't afraid to come out and say that when you listen to the president though I mean remember George W Bush in the wake of 9-11 he gave arguably one of one of his most impressive speeches and he'd been heralded for it which was to say look we don't want to there are peaceful Muslims in this country and we want to separate radical Islam from those individuals but he was not afraid to call it radical Islam this president though is afraid to call it what it is well why? it's why I think that he I'm not exactly sure why the reason I liked what the President Bush's approach is that it actually helped protect those innocent Muslims that we all know that are out there right, right? so if you if you are willing to define radical Islam then you can separate people who are like the guest you had earlier on um, in the program who was talking about the counter extremism project I mean those are the kind of Muslim Americans that you want to herald and highlight and bring more into the government um, what the president has done is instead of separating out peaceful Muslims from radical Muslims he has twinned the issues of gun control and mass shootings with terrorism and I think that's why people feel like they're, they don't have as much confidence but, but there's a reason for that I mean there is a villain according to the president and that's us it's middle America you have too many guns you drive too many many SUVs, your bigots, by the way. But the real villain here seems in part our, our visa policy. I mean, the U.S. government, yeah. the Obama administration let this woman in. She lied in her application. They did no diligence on it. Is there going to be a moment where they think through their own mistakes and try to rectify them? Well, one of the things that's difficult for intel and police, right, is that they have to connect all the dots that are coming at them and make sure that they don't miss anything. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and the problem is we need to get better at figuring out, having foresight for hindsight. That's right. what we really and, need. And then code, uh, connecting the dots made more difficult, and possibly that was a problem in this case, after the Snowden leaks, because now they know what what they need to do to stay under the radar. They know how we track them, how we listen to them. I don't know if that's exactly been pr proven no, in, this case, in this but, case. Uh, but my, and my position is that every, all intelligence officials and police need all the tools that they can get in order to try to protect us. Yeah. But these things are going to happen. And ICE is taking responsibility for this. It's not that necessarily that she had some direct ISIS training, but it is this online social media work that they do. What ISIS said is, let a thousand flowers bloom. Go out there and conduct your own attacks. Mm -hmm. what, she, what we know is that she was pledging allegiance to ISIS in the middle of the attacks or just right before they did the attacks right. so that then ISIS could claim that they had um, got a win here. We yeah. saw an analysis earlier on the show. We had, uh, we had Lee Carter on the show at analyzing some of the responses from the GOP candidates, uh, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, and the, the, the dial numbers sort of through the roof when he was really coming out and supporting the police departments in the wake of these horrible shootings and others. Then you had Hillary Clinton's response in the wake of this, talking about the push for gun control and really kind of politicizing the issue. Do you think this is going to help or hurt her? I think it hurts her. I mean, for, she did exactly what President Obama did. And, and immediately, when, as the news is breaking in San Bernardino, instead of waiting even like half a second to find out what's going on, she went straight to the gun control uh, message, just like President Obama did. Contrast that with any of the Republican candidates who waited a little while, actually called for prayers 
and thoughts for the families and were criticized for that. They were Meanwhile, criticized and then tied to the NRA by those who correct. prayed how many NRA donations do they get and, tied but to. then immediately when uh, the FBI called it terrorism, now Hillary Clinton is trying to backfill and to show how tough she would be on terror. But I think she is um, completely linked with President Obama and his policies until she shows us but that But isn't she there is a not. political component here, too? I mean, the Muslim American voters are a really important constituency for Democrats running for office. They become more important every cycle. And they have shown an unwillingness to call it Islamic terror. It seems to me in part because they're worried about losing that vote. Well, to me actually though, that you actually help protect those innocent Americans if you are attacking radical Islam right. and if you are fighting them there rather than fighting them here. Last night on O'Reilly Factor, Jim Woolsey, the former CIA director for Bill Clinton, said we have to take the fight to the enemy over there. That is not necessarily a Hillary Clinton position right now. I don't know mm. what her position will be. Um, I guess we'll have to find well, out. It's sad to say that we don't know what her position will be. In She's terms of the GOP con uh, candidate which one do you think is the strongest when it comes to foreign policy of this type and protecting Americans? I'm, I'm just, I would say that any of the Republican candidates are in a better position than Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama on this. And I think that any of them will do better on it. I do think that Chris Christie, with his background and experience in prosecuting war on terror and really understanding like, where, where, I came, where I came from on it. I also think that Rubio is strong and Trump is strong on the surveillance piece. I think that Rand and Cruz have a little bit of a vulnerability there. But overall, what you're looking for is a worldview and a willingness to fight terror in a different way and more aggressively. And any of the Republican candidates are strong stronger than Hillary and Obama. And this most recent poll has, you know, has Americans saying that uh, that homegrown terrorism at the top of their list it was a shift from the economy, which was at the top of every poll. So how do you think that this but shakes up the race? I think the, it, it, we have a long way to go. Right. So we're 11 months from the election. It could be that terrorism feels like it goes to the back burner by next November. But you can't you can't anticipate that. So if I were running for office or advising someone, I'd say, of course, the economy is going to be number one issue and number one A is going to be terrorism unless it becomes number one. Mm. And, and that could be very real. You have to expect the unexpected. I actually think that something we should be pressing the administration on right now is what kind of a terror situation is President Obama going to leave to his successor? Mm. Because the most important thing you can do in this last year of a presidency is set up your successor for success. We know that terrorists try to strike when there's a change in administration right. from one administration to the next. It's a, there's a period of instability. One thing you have to do is make sure that that is just locked solid and President Bush did that for President Obama and I hope that President Obama does that forever who is going to replace him next January. I, I want to be charitable. It's hard to believe that's a major concern. It's very difficult and I think if you see what Charles Krauthammer said last night, he um, was articulating what Americans are feeling, which is, is I, I'm reluctant to say the president doesn't seem to want to take care of our families and our children and protect us, but he didn't inspire a lot of confidence, especially waiting with a uh, you know, taped radio address. He's not camera shy mm -hmm. at but all is the until biggest, there's, the FBI calls it terrorism. Yeah. Is the biggest issue immigration? I mean, yes, we just heard reports that there were five Middle Eastern men arrested at the southern border trying to come in with some sort of steel pipe mechanisms. They're now in custody by the FBI. Is immigration the biggest problem threat to a, a successor in office? I don't think I don't think we know that. I think there are multiple things that are going on. One is self-radicalization of people who are already here, who are operating under the radar, and that we didn't know. They're, they worked in a government office. They had a baby shower thrown to them by colleagues. They looked like they were perfectly uh, integrated into American society. And meanwhile, under the hood. And, and with a grandmother living upstairs and a baby at their side, they are making pipe bombs and planning major big attacks. And I think that we'll find out a lot more from the FBI if they had any other tentacles. I think the biggest concern is what we don't know. As always. And there's Freedom, a lot. Thank you for that. Definitely. That was really smart. Well, thank you. Thank We've you. We've got Ted Cruz coming up, by the way, uh, later in this hour in about 25 minutes from now.